Hello everyone, sorry for the quiet start. It was very packed in there, but also very quiet. Sometimes these food places in New York City, people don't talk too loud, so it's uh, very quiet to, and awkward to go live inside. But here, I'm outside of one of the best bagel places in New York City that I really enjoy, I really recommend, and I think out of all the bagel places I've tried, this has consistently been the best. Now I'm here for a very special reason, and that very special reason, wait up, I am actually sideways for some reason. Are, where are they situated? So we are right now at 50, 51st Street and 3rd Avenue. It was, uh, I'm, I'm running a little bit late because it was really packed because of lunchtime, right during Midtown Manhattan, people start getting out of lunch anywhere from 12 to 2 p.m., and that's peak lunch hour. However, I'm here for a very special reason. I have a friend, one of my very good friends, her name is Kat, and she is living in North Carolina. She's been going through a very, very tough month. And she wanted a piece of her home. Again, she wanted to taste a little bit of New York City again. And she asked me if I can send her a few, a few bagels back to her in North Carolina so she can feel a little piece of home once again. And that's what I'm doing today. So in honor of my friend Kat, I am bringing her a little piece of home, six freshly baked bagels, uh, her favorites, three plain and three everything bagels. And then we're gonna walk towards a little secret area that I love to hang out in and eat in this area that is not usually stuffy indoors, but outside in the beautiful garden. So let's go, let's walk over there as we talk about Essa Bagels and their amazing, amazing bagel history uh, that goes all the way back to the 1700s, 1800s. So everyone press that heart button for my friend Kat. She's tuning in, hey Kat. Uh, I got her six bagels, three plain, three everything, her favorite. Cat, unfortunately, they didn't have egg, but they got they they had everything. Um, and this is Essa Bagels, established in 1976. I'll show you what the Everything Bagel has soon. We're at 51st Street and Third Avenue in Midtown Manhattan. If you want to see the inside of the shop, just go to the beginning of the video. Now, Essa Bagel has been running since 1976 and it is one of the best bagel shops, in my opinion, in New York City. Uh, of course, there are the classic bagel shops such as Russ and Daughters, which I've shown you before. But this one, I think they really stick out because their bagels are massive, huge, fluffy bagels. And we're about to see them soon. Uh, they have about three locations. It's packed to the brim during the day. If you want to come when it's a little bit more emptier, come after 6 p.m. And it's a little bit more reasonable inside. So, in order to eat these bagels, I'm going to go, I'm going to take all of you to a secret little garden that's nearby here so we can um, talk about the history of the bagel in peace. And I can show you a beautiful, fresh New York City bagel. Hey Minerva, welcome. I nice see you here. Sorry, I'm having camera issues, gimbal issues. Okay, sorry about the shaky camera. I'm having some gimbal issues, but now we're walking to 49th Street. 
and go into a secret little garden that you've seen in a previous Hidden History episode. We're going back all the way to Hidden History episode one. Now, when it comes to New York City foods, there's, I think, in my opinion, three major classics. Pizza, hot dogs, and of course, the bagel. Now, those three New York City classics come from three major populations that immigrated to New York City. The pizza being the Italian Americans, the hot dog being the German Americans, and the bagel being the Polish Americans and all the other Eastern European Jewish immigrants that moved here in the 1700s. So finding a good place to sit down and relax while eating a good lunch might be a little bit difficult in this neighborhood because this neighborhood is always crowded, lots of cars passing through, lots of offices here, people getting out exactly at 12 p.m. crowding all the restaurants. So I like to go to a tiny little secret garden over here in the Instituto Cervantes, which is a Spanish center here in New York City. And it's called Amster Yard. Let's go right inside 49th Street between 3rd and 2nd Avenue. This is one of my favorite places to check it out. So here is one of my favorite gardens. Oh, there's a lot of people here. Uh, Okay, so this is one of my favorite places to sit in New York City. It's a, it's a tiny little garden called Amster Yard in uh, East Midtown, which is a notoriously, notoriously busy neighborhood. Now, if you want to learn more about this yard, go to Hidden History Episode 1 and go check it out because there is a full history about the man who started this, one of the most world-renowned interior designers. But today's main focus is the bagel. I got myself, aside from, if you're just tuning in, my friend from North Carolina is going through some tough times and she's originally from New York City area. She wanted a little piece of home uh, just to feel a little bit better. I know how good it could eat. For me, I've always enjoyed a good slice of New York City style pizza. Even a bagel feels good. Uh, so sure for her, she really wanted a bagel. So I'm sending her six bagels, three everything, and three plain. Uh, now let me show you what the everything bagel is because I got myself a bagel sandwich to be showing it to you. All right, let me... Let me uh, tune in. So, hello, Layla. Hello, uh, Elizabeth. You would never think this garden was in here. Yeah, you would never think this garden was in here. Hello, uh, Kay. Um, 
Kat, I'm so happy you're able to tune in while live. Everyone press that heart button for my friend Kat. Uh, she's about to get some bagels. Um, what does the Everything Bagel have on it? I'll show you in a bit. Uh, have I ever been to a random city, city such as Omaha? Yes, uh, I haven't been to Omaha, but I've been to a random city, Rockland, Maine, last year in uh, September. I did a entire partnership with Visit Maine for one week. It was really cool. Check it out. And where are they situated? Essa Bagel has three locations, one in Murray Hill, one here in East Midtown, and another one in uh, Herald Square, right by Penn Station. I think that's another reason why they're great because they're very centrally located. So here is a classic New York City style bagel sandwich. And this is a bacon and egg on an everything bagel. Sometimes people order uh, it's bacon, egg, and cheese is the normal one. I got, I got it without the cheese, but bacon, egg, and cheese on an everything bagel. This one's whole wheat and that's why it's a little bit darker, but check this out. So what is an everything bagel? Well, everything bagel has poppy seeds, sesame seeds, it has garlic, it has also uh, salt, and sometimes other things, but yeah, mostly those five things right there. And that is a huge heap of egg and bacon, and people order it also with cheese, bacon, egg, and cheese. Now before I get into the history, let's just bite into it. Now, super fluffy. This is what makes Essa bagels really stick out. It's really, really fluffy. The bagel's warm and mm. 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 Delicious. So Chewy, really, really chewy. It takes quite a while to chew through a bagel, and the fact that it's very chewy actually makes the bagel really um, filling. Uh, that's why, for a New Yorker on the run early in the day, this is like the perfect filled-up sandwich that you can get. Now there are mainly two types of bagels in the world. Uh, well, at least in North America. There is the uh, New York City style bagel and then there is the Montreal style bagel. The Montreal style bagel, check it out, last year I went over to Montreal and actually had them, but they're a lot smaller and a lot thinner. These are the biggest of the, all the bagels. Because there's a few other bagel types, there's the Turkish bagel, also known as the Samit. And the Samit is a very long, very big round bagel. And then you have the Chinese bagels. Now, we don't know if there's any connection between all these bagel types, but where does this version of the bagel come back to? Well, what is this first and foremost? Well, this is a bread made with malt that is first boiled and then baked. Now, why boiled? Most breads are always baked. Well. Mm. Okay. So why boil them when while well, well, most breads are just baked? Well, for that we have to go all the way back to the 1700s, Krakow, Poland. The Catholic Church at that time passed an edict where they disallowed Jewish, uh, Jewish communities to bake. I'm not entirely sure why they disallowed Jewish communities to not be allowed to be baked to bake. Um, so these Jewish communities were resorting to other methods of making breads, and the easiest other method of making bread is boiling it. 
Now, you don't end up getting the same type of red, so they had to use different ingredients that were uh, more additional ingredients just rather than wheat and fl uh, than flour and salt. Flour and water and then sometimes salt. You had to use yeast, you had to use malt, you had to use sugar, honey, whatever, a bunch of other things. And that's where the first mention of the bagel started. 1700s in Krakow, Poland. And it was a uh, boiled bread, in essence. But why also boiled? Aside from not being allowed to bake, why boiled? Well, the thing is, when you boil bread, it lasts for a little bit longer than a regular bread. And this is very important for the Jewish communities of, of Eastern Europe, because these Jewish communities tend to be very poor, especially when you go further east into uh, Europe. And being very poor, you would need to save your breads as long as possible. Hence, that's why we have flatbread dishes in poor areas in Naples, like the pizza, uh, and hence why we have pretzels in the poor areas of Germany, like from Bavaria. Same thing with bagels. I'm gonna have another bite. with some sparkling water it was just it used to be a New York thing so just a side fun fact it used to be very normal in New York City to drink sparkling water or seltzer and there was very major seltzer companies in New York City a lot actually many of the major seltzer companies that still exist in North America came from New York and the reason there was seltzer in New York City was also because of the Eastern Europeans or Central Europeans and Eastern Europeans. So a lot of immigrants that came from Germany, came from Hungary, came from Austria, all were very used to drinking carbonated water uh, because there was natural carbonated springs in those areas. And it's to this day, it's very normal for that part of the world to usually drink sparkling water over still water. And that came over to New York City. So seltzer was actually really common in New York City all the way until about 1950. By 1950, suddenly seltzer uh, got a very bad rap because people wanted uh, as distilled water as possible. They were very fearful of minerals such as magnesium, such as salt, such as uh, other types of minerals that are in carbonated water. And they actually outlawed uh, or well, not outlawed, but they, a lot of people stopped buying mineral water of all sorts, including sparkling water. Suddenly, sparkling water industry died in North America, in New York City, and you only have like two remaining seltzer shops here. So Pat, you say you live in the, uh, relatively nearby. You never knew this place existed. It's a little haven in the busy part of town. It is. It's a beautiful little haven in the busy part of town. The bagels are a bit flat here in Ireland. I can imagine um, it's really hard to find good bagels outside of New York City or Montreal. If you're having the, the, the Eastern European Jewish style bagel. And the reason for that is it's... Um, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's because of the recipes and they... Uh, so these bagels are actually also hand rolled. So they actually hand roll them and make them very fluffy by hand rolling them. Sometimes when you buy these bagels in stores, uh, frozen at the supermarket, they are processed through a machine. So you don't get that natural fluffiness that comes from actual human hand contact on the dough, fluffing it up, rolling it up putting into that ring and then boiling it. Now, where does the word bagel come from? Well, the word bagel comes from the Yiddish word bugle. And the Yiddish word bugle comes from the Hebrew word that uh, means ring. And the ring is the ring of the classic New York City 
bagel. So, okay, you also go for sparkling water. Mm, awesome. Is it a thing in Ireland? I know in London it really wasn't. And I'm going to Paris soon. In Paris, they definitely don't do fizzy drinks. And Kat, you asked, um, you heard is the water. Okay, so that is another, it's not proven, but it is definitely an uh, urban legend that New York City's bagels are so good it's because of the water. Now, that could be the case, but it might be a very small, small reason. Because every single different part of the world has a different uh, composition of water from all the different minerals within that water. Hence, why I love drinking my sparkling mineral water, like Perrier, uh, that comes from Italy. They always taste really unique. If you try any mineral water, you'll have a different taste to it. Uh, mineral water from, say, Fiji or from Evian that gets it from the Alps. And they all have a slightly different taste to it, especially very attuned to taste. And because of that, every water has a different composition. And that's why you can end up getting very specific with what type of water you use for what type of food. Some people claim that the mineral composition of New York City water ends up being perfect for making a fluffy, fluffy bagel. So, how did the bagel get here? It started in Krakow, uh, Poland. Came out of necessity for the Jewish uh, communities there to just have bread that lasts for a little bit longer. That's why, luckily, I think these bagels are going to taste really good when they arrive to my friend Kat. But how did they get here? So, 18, late 1800s, massive waves of Eastern European immigrants start coming here, especially as Poland is immersed in war with its surrounding neighbors. And all these Jewish immigrants settle mostly in New York City, so much so that to this day there's over 1.1 million Jewish um, Jewish people living in the New York City area, more than any other city in the U.S. combined, more than Boston, Philadelphia, Chicago, San Francisco, even L.A. They end up also bringing the bagels here. Now the bagels here were actually a good sell because there was already a lot of German immigrants. A lot of these German immigrants had a good uh, taste for pretzels. Pretzels is kind of the proto-bagel. It's also a boiled bread. It's nice and flu uh, fluffy and chewy. And it sold re really well, uh, not just to the Eastern European immigrants that were here, but also to the German immigrants that were already here. And hence, we end up getting the bagel. How did we get lox and cream cheese on the bagel? Well. This, of course, it won't be kosher. But what is kosher is what you would call cold foods mixed with breads that are not meats from land. So you, and according to Jewish tradition, you cannot combine a land animal that's cooked, such as a pork, uh, chicken, beef, lamb, whatever it is. You can't combine it with a bagel especially on specific days. However, you can combine dairies and you can combine fishes, specific fishes that are not shellfish, but uh, a certain type of fishes like tuna and salmon. You can combine dairy, tuna, salmon, and a bagel together. And that's where you'll have two different types of shops in New York City that date back to the earliest Jewish immigrants. You will have appetizing shops, and you will have uh, delis. Appetizing shops would be breads, dairies, and uh, the fishes that were allowed in kosher um, style of food, which is everything that's not shellfish. Then you will have a deli, and a deli would be all the meats, all the fermented foods such as sauerkraut, pickles, etc. Usually served on breads that were like rye bread. And that's why you have 
cream cheese locks on a bagel. Now, egg and cheese kind of came more of a New York thing because eating eggs is not really a thing that people do in Europe for breakfast. Uh, it's actually really rare in the world outside of North America to eat eggs for breakfast. So in New York City, it's very typical to eat eggs for breakfast. Bacon is also very popular. So that marriage naturally happened, especially when you go to these uh, food carts that are all around the city. It's just something very easy to make, very on the go, and you combine it with the bagel, and boom, you have the bacon, egg, and cheese on the bagel. Uh, and that's basically the uh, short history of the bagel. Um, you can have, there's some amazing bagels all around the city. I love going to Essa Bagel for their egg and bacon or egg and sausage, anything that has a great egg in it or, or Greek cream cheese. Essa Bagel is amazing. Now Essa Bagel, the word Essa, Essa, right here. Essa, S is the Yiddish word for E. So it means eat a bagel. And look at the mascot there. So this is the address, 3rd Avenue. And then they have their original shop, which was on 1st Avenue in Murray Hill. And it's everything on the bagel. However, I have two other bagel recommendations. If you want to have the best locks of your life, with some cream cheese, some capers, maybe even some tomato, on a huge bagel, uh, go to Russ and Daughters. Now Russ and Daughters, uh, I love their bagels. I would put their bagels second to Essa. However, uh, they do get the best salmon. Lox is a, a version of smoked salmon that doesn't have any salt in it. Uh, so it's really good, Russ and Daughters. My third recommendation is if you're in Brooklyn, um, and you're in the downtown Brooklyn area, go to Bergen Bagels. Bergen Bagels is great, especially for um, egg and cheese, bacon egg and cheese on the bagel. Really awesome and really inexpensive as well. So those are my three recommendations. Mara, uh, now you're making me hungry, I'll have to watch this later. Hello Helena, hello Lizek, hello Michelle, hello Glory. Uh, sparkling water tastes like when you get pins and needles in your arms and legs. <laughs> That's what people say. I, I, I love, I actually got hooked on sparkling water when I traveled to, to Budapest. I stayed there for a week and I went to Athens as well where they also drink a lot of sparkling water. And it was just so normal that I just got hooked on it. I couldn't have still water. It was weird asking to, for them for still water. They were like always confused like, what, you want still water? And we have ba great bagel places in South Jersey, yes. And uh, you don't only find great bagels in New York City, as, you, as uh, Regor mentioned, there's great bagel shops in New Jersey, there's great bagel shops in Montreal. I covered one specific one in uh, my Montreal bagel history, check that out. I also covered uh, English bagels. English bagels are spelled with an I, and English bagels were sold in England about 100 years prior to bagels in New York City. However, they never really got super popular in London. Um, so it never became associated with London. It only became associated with New York City and to an extension, Montreal. And I'm a hi, welcome, nice to see you here. And yes, Russ and Daughters, and makes sense. In German, Essen also means tea, yes. Uh, so there's a lot of overlap because Yiddish is a combination of Hebrew with German. And that combination, that's why you have many similar words. And best bagels are in uh, Brick Lane, yes. That is the best bagel, one of the best bagels I've also had in, in, my, in my life. Check it out, it's in uh, Brick Lane, London. Uh, I did a full video on it, really good. And hello Patrick, welcome, nice to see you here. Okay everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I have an announcement, I'm going to Paris for two weeks, taking you all of you, everyday live videos, of all Parisian history, we're exploring, excuse me, we're exploring uh, the secrets, the mysteries, the history, the food of the city of love and lights uh, from the old churches like Saint Sulpice and Notre Dame to the museums. I might be able to do a gorilla live video maybe in the Louvre uh, 
and then we'll be covering the history of croissants, baguettes, and all amazing French foods. Check it out, two weeks, August 14th all the way to August 27th. And also, if you want to lend your support to Urbanist, because when I go abroad, I have to incur a lot of costs for data and transportation. And if you enjoy these videos and they bring you some joy, um, for the price of a single cup of coffee, $5, you can become a supporter and so help support Urbanist and you end up getting yourself two weeks vacation to Paris vicariously and learning all the history you can from that city uh, as well with my normal New York City videos. So right down there is the button for becoming a supporter or you can click the link in the comments or you can uh, click the big become a supporter button on the homepage for Urbanist on Facebook. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, keep being awesome and always keep on eating bagels. And Kat, I hope you enjoy your bagels. They're coming soon to you in North Carolina. Have a great day everyone. Bye-bye.